As you likely know, vitamin D is really important for the health of your heart, bones, and beyond. And I wanted to share with you a recently published randomized controlled trial looking at how when vitamin D and vitamin A are paired together, it enhances levels of both vitamin A and vitamin D in individuals who have recently recovered from a stroke. The title of this paper is Combination of Vitamin A and D Supplementation for Ischemic Stroke Effects on Interleukin-1 Beta and Clinical Outcomes. This was published by investigators in Indonesia. The aim of the study was that accumulative evidence suggests that vitamin A and vitamin D agonists can alleviate the development of atherosclerosis. Therefore, the aim of this study was to determine the effect of vitamin A and vitamin D combination supplement on interleukin-1 beta, which is a critically important pro-inflammatory interleukin or cytokine that is involved in atherosclerosis and the pathophysiology of a stroke. Now, you might be saying, well, Mike, I haven't had a stroke. I'm not recovering from a stroke. Why should I care about this study? Well, I wanted to share with you this study. It was a 12-week study involving 120 participants because of this aspect of the study. They randomized people to either have a placebo, which was a cornstarch pill, vitamin D in isolation, vitamin A in isolation, or vitamin D and A together. And what they wanted to look at is what effect this has. Because there have been numerous published papers. I've been following this vitamin A, vitamin D story since 2008. I've been very interested in this because when I wrote the book, Belly Fat Effect, which was all about the aspect of the immune system as it's related to weight loss and metabolic health. And I was really intrigued by natural things that we can do to pivot the inflammatory response of the immune system and downregulate that into a more tolerogenic or regulatory state and improve the functioning of these anti-inflammatory immune cells known as T-regulatory cells. And if you haven't yet read the book, well, it turns out that increased belly fat increases a cytokine known as leptin that you hear a lot about in the context of appetite control. But leptin, it turns out, is pro-inflammatory and shifts your immune system to become more inflamed. And so if you have increased belly fat, you're more likely to have autoimmunity, atherosclerosis or heart disease, joint pain, osteoarthritis, dementia, cancer, and beyond. So we shouldn't just be focusing on calorie restriction. We should focus on anti-inflammatory tools. And in that book, we talked a lot about vitamin A and vitamin D. And there was really good evidence back then in the late you know, 2009, 2010. And now we have clinical trials pairing vitamin D and vitamin A together. Now, if you look here at table four, the changes in cytokines, particularly interleukin-1 beta, which it turns out is a key instigator in the pathology of atherosclerosis and the etiology of a stroke, you see a the greatest reduction in the interleukin-1 beta was not in just the vitamin D group. It was not just in the vitamin A group. It was in the combination group that took both vitamin A and vitamin D. And uh, interleukin-1 beta levels were cut more than 50%. Uh, and if you look here, at the changes in serum vitamin A and serum vitamin D levels, they both favor the combination group. That's what I think is really important because as we've talked about before in other videos, the vitamin D and vitamin A, how they are unique is they have a hormone-like effect, meaning they bind to a nuclear receptor and activate genes. Other vitamins like thiamine, folate, methyl B12, you know, riboflavin, you know, all these different vitamins, they're usually cofactors in enzymatic reactions, but it, it turns out that vitamin D and vitamin A have hormone-like effects, like testosterone binds to the t androgen receptor, testosterone receptor, and turns on genes and initiates anabolism. Cortisol turns on genes that initiate catabolism pathways. And it turns out that both vitamin A and vitamin D, they're nuclear receptors where they bind to and activate genes that have health-promoting properties. They co-localize in what's known as heterodimerize, and so they function together. So it kind of makes sense, especially when you consider that foods that are naturally enriched in vitamin D and vitamin A, you find both of them together. If you think about yogurt, eggs, fish, uh, these types of foods, fish liver, beef liver, you get vitamin A and, and as well as, depending upon the source of food, a little bit of vitamin D as well. Now, when do people eat fish? In the summer and in the fall, when you're going to have the highest vitamin D levels as well. So I think that's also interesting when you look at the seasonality uh, of these uh, aspects. So the basic premise here is good. We have decent evidence to suggest that if you want to optimize the health of vitamin D, 
you might want to consider maintaining vitamin A levels. And I'll put links in the description below over at Myoscience. And for disclaimer purposes, we're not talking about treating, diagnosing, curing, or preventing disease, just supporting whole body health. Uh, we have updated the essential fatty nutrients to also now future, along with vitamin D and K2 in the MK7 form, retinol. And retinol is the bioactive form of vitamin A that is different from carotenoids. So that is in the description below. But I, I just, there's all sorts of options out there for vitamin A and vitamin D that you have access to. That's just one of many. Okay. So you can save with the code podcast at checkout, but I most importantly wanted you to know that there's decent evidence and accumulating evidence to suggest that when you pair these two together, you get a greater modulation in the immune system that is favorable for most people and a greater increase in both vitamin A and vitamin D serum levels. And we have pretty good evidence to suggest that higher vitamin A levels are inversely correlated with altered mood states. We know that anxiety, depression, mental health issues like suicide is on the rise. There has been pretty good evidence to suggest that retinol is inversely correlated with poor mood states. We know that your body doesn't make retinol. You have to get it from your diet, either in the form of carotenoids, which are the uh, pro-vitamin A analogs that get converted into retinol, or you have to get retinoic acid or retinol from your diet. And it turns out that because retinol is the bioactive form of vitamin A that only comes from animal-based foods, from fish, from liver, from beef, from eggs, from yogurt, from milk. You're not getting it from sweet potatoes or rice or you know, tempeh. You're getting this from eating an omnivorous diet, and many people are not eating an omnivorous diet. So I just wanted you to understand this. When we think about vitamin A, most people think about health of the eyes, uh, the retina. And I'm not just making this up. The scientific name for vitamin A derivatives is retinoid, which is derived from the word retina. As you know, the retina is involved in photorecepting aspects of vision and vitamin A-based photoreceptor proteins are found in the retina in the eye. And so we've long known vitamin A is important for vision, for eye health. Uh, individuals who are born in regions of the world that have uh, are devoid of vitamin A tend to have vision problems among other things. But recently we've heard a lot about vitamin A and how it affects the immune system. And we've also heard a lot about vitamin D and how that affects the immune system as well. And now we have this study in folks who have recovered from a stroke finding that when vitamin A is paired with vitamin D, both are increased significantly more than when they are given not in combination with each other. And that's, I think, what's important. So if you're eating an omnivorous diet, you're getting fish, you're getting liver, you're getting milk, you're getting yogurt, you're getting beef and eggs and so forth, maybe you don't need to consider supplementing with vitamin A. But if you're not, you might want to consider pairing vitamin A with your vitamin D. Low levels, around 800 international units in a long-term situation, uh, in a short-term acute scenario where you're recovering from a cold or such, you can increase the international units or the retinoid-associated uh, activity units to 30 or 50,000 for a short-term period, but you don't want to take that perpetuity. So I just wanted to share with you this study and help you better understand the connection here between vitamin D and vitamin A levels and how they are working synergistically and the combination might be better than them in isolation. So I would love to know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and we'll catch you in a future one down the road.